Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. I'm continuing my Mists of Pandaria solo raid series, and in this one we're going to be visiting the Heart of Fear. You can find this raid at coordinates 3934 in the Dread Wastes in Pandaria. There are six bosses in total, all of which are technically soloable even on 25 man heroic, although the fifth boss, the Amber Shaper, is a huge DPS check and it requires a lot of gear, at least at the time this video was made. To be able to have enough damage, you most likely need an eye level of at least around the 870 range, but that'll depend on what class you are, obviously. If your goal is to solo the entire raid and you don't feel confident about your damage, you're better off just sticking to 10-man mode since the Amber Shaper is pretty easy just due to having less health. Keep in mind that you can't switch between 10-man and 25-man mode since they share the same lockout, so you either need to put it on 10-man mode or bring a friend on 25-man if you can't solo him. And as a point of reference, I'm running this as an eye level 849 on Holy Death Knight, so if you have anything close to that, you should be fine for most of the run. Before you head out, you may want to pick up some Bear Tartar to speed things up, and if you're planning on soloing the Amber Shaper, you'll probably want some potions, a flask, heroism drum, and DPS food. And if you only need certain bosses, check the description because I'll have some timestamps for you. Anyways, the first boss in this raid is the Imperial Vizier, Zorlock. Pretty simple fight here, the only hitch here is that he does a mind control if you aren't solo, so if you brought a friend you're better off having him sit out this fight. Once you engage him, he'll fill the room with gas and fly to a nearby platform. Just follow him and DPS him down. Eventually he'll fly to the opposite platform and leave behind a shade. Once he does, kill the shade and just follow him and DPS him down again. And he'll do that once more, this time flying to the middle platform, so just rinse and repeat. Once his health gets low, he'll move to the central area of the room and dissipate all of the gas. From this point, it's just a tank and spank, so just burn him down. During this fight, he'll use an ability called Attenuation. This does some pretty high damage, so just make sure that you keep your distance and dodge as much of it as you can, and you should be good to go. The next fight is Blade Lord Tyek. Another fairly easy fight here. This is pretty much a tank and spank until he reaches 20% health. Once he does, he'll send you to the opposite side of the room, and your goal is to reach him while avoiding the tornadoes. If you get hit by one, it's not a huge deal. It'll just send you back a bit and prolong the fight. Once you reach him, DPS him down until he reaches 10% life, at which point he'll switch sides and you'll have to run the gauntlet for a second time. You can avoid this if before his first gauntlet at 20% health, you dot him up or use your hardest hitting ability. If you can take him down to 10% health before the first gauntlet starts, you'll get to skip it. Anyways, the third boss is Garillon. This is the giant bug boss. He'll have some mechanics to where if you DPS his legs, he'll slow down, but I found it easier to just face roll him. The main thing you have to be careful about is to stay out of the pink circle or else he'll do an annoying AoE stun. Other than that, they'll just burn him down. Next up is Windlord Melzerak. The main worry with this guy are his Amber Trapper adds. They're on his right side, and they have to die as soon as possible, or else they'll perma-stun you. As an Unholy Death Knight, I didn't have any trouble, but we have really good AoE, so I can see some classes having trouble with this. If you can get them down, though, the fight is downhill from there. Once his adds are dead, he'll go berserk and do more damage, but he'll take more damage as well, so just burn him down. It's a pretty quick fight. And next up is the big roadblock for most people, and that's the Amber Shaper Unsak. The problem with this boss is that around 40 seconds after aggroing him, he'll transform you into an Amber Golem and you'll be instantly killed. If you're on 25 man mode, either normal or heroic, you can get past this, but you need a lot of damage. The basic strategy is once you aggro him, is to pop everything you can to get him down to 70% as soon as possible. Heroism drums, potions, DPS cooldowns, you need to get him out of phase 1 before he has a chance to transform you. Once you do get him down to 70%, he'll summon a giant Amber Monstrosity. Once this is out, you're still on that timer. You have to kill this thing and push him into the next phase before you get that transformation. And there's no use DPSing down the Amber Shaper since you'll get a 99% reduction shield while the monstrosity is up. So like I said, it is tough. It's a huge DPS check and even if you do it successfully, the fight isn't over. A tip I'll share for this is that the monstrosity spawns from the same spot every time. It's to your left in that corner of the room if you're facing the boss. So to reduce the travel time when it spawns, you should pull the Amber Shaper to that area as you're damaging him. If you do manage to kill the monstrosity before you get transformed, he'll rush into the middle of the room and power up. From here, once again, you have to DPS race him down before he transforms you. You have about 20 seconds to burn through 70% of his health, which is definitely tough. I wasn't able to do it as an eye level 849 Unholy Death Knight, but like I said, it should be possible with around an 870-ish eye level. This video was made during the Emerald Nightmare Raid, so it's pretty early on in the expansion. If you're watching this at a later date, I imagine it would be way easier. But once you get past the Amber Shaper, there's just one boss left, and that's the Grand Empress Shexir. She can be tough as well. The main thing you need to worry about on this fight is her Eyes of the Empress ability. Once she hits you with this five times, you become charmed, so it's another DPS race, basically. If you had enough damage to get past the Amber Shaper, though, you'll most likely be able to kill her before you get five stacks of this. She'll also start casting a long 20-second fear once she gets under 30% health, and she'll chain it until you're dead. 
So if you have any burst cooldowns, it's best to save it for that range. Fear Breakers will of course be handy as well. So she can be tough too, but like I said, as long as you're able to solo the Amber Shaper, you should be able to solo her as well. And that's the whole raid. If you do manage to solo it on 25 man heroic, you'll pick up around 1500 gold from looting the bosses and vendoring the gear. On my run, I also picked up 4 ghost iron lockboxes and 19 motes of harmony. And in case you get stuck on the amber shaper, it's around 1000 gold up until that point. If you opted for 10 man mode, I also did a heroic run. I picked up around 750 gold, 3 lockboxes, and 20 motes of harmony. If you have a good knowledge of the raid, I imagine it should only take you 15 to 20 minutes at most on 25 man heroic and probably around 10 to 15 on 10 man mode. So while it's not the best for gold making, you can definitely do worse. I think most of you are probably running it for transmogs and achievements though. But that's pretty much it. I do plan on making solo guides for all of these Pandaria raids, so keep an eye out for those if that interests you. I do actually have one out for the Siege of Orgrimmar already. I'll have a link to that at the end of this video. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. Give it a like if you liked it, and if you really liked it, let me know in the comments and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching, good luck, and... Peace.